Trey. Hold on. Good Trey go. One second. All right. Thanks, Trey. All right, everyone. Uh, good evening. This is Dr. Shivaya Dure. For some people, maybe morning. Welcome. Um, today, we're going to have our um, open house that we do in our town hall. We typically do our town hall at 8 p.m. in the mornings. We do a, a, a overall orientation uh, for Truth, Freedom, Health. But in the evenings at 8 p.m. EST, we'll start with our open house. I'm sorry, start with our town hall, and then we go to our open house. And today we're going to be really talking about how the leaders that we have really reflect a citizen state of consciousness. I talked about this, but I think it's really important to emphasize this. Um, so let me really speak to this because what our movement, our institution, our community is really doing is to create leaders. There's a number of leaders on this call. Um, all over the world and all over the country. So this is quite extraordinary. Um, the process that we're putting people through involves, first, if you think about it, out of the 8 billion people on the planet, uh, a set of them over the last four years have um, sort of found our videos online in spite of the massive amount of censorship. And out of those people, about half a billion people throughout the world know about us in spite of all the censorship. And out of that, a set of people, about a half a million people have touched our movement as members, supporters, or as warriors. Um, so the first step is some someone may just come and they may just wanna be members, you know, and we give them many, many tools to do that. We give them some important papers to read um, that go to the heart of the science of this movement because you need the right education, the right theory, if you're gonna actually go build a movement. Otherwise you could waste 60, 50, 70 years, you know, meandering around and wasting a lot of your time. And we wanna cut that short. That's a lot of suffering for people. And then other people support our movement. Um, and then we have people actually go to become a warrior scholar. Now we call it a warrior scholar program. It's not just sort of, you know, scratching your beard, smoking your pipe and, philosophizing or being on social media and clicking away and hitting likes and shares. Um, it's uh, the program here is where we want you to study. And it's taken me a long time to put together the curricula. Um, and that curricula comes out of a very foundational discovery, which is unraveling the connection between modern engineering systems theory with ancient systems of uh, yoga and medicine. It's quite a, quite frankly, a prof profound connection. And that connection is a body of knowledge all of you have been um, enriched to frankly receive. I used to teach it at MIT to a very small set of people. MIT graduates around, you know, 4,000 people come to MIT, 1,000 uh, undergraduates, 1,000, uh, sorry, 8,000 total people, 4,000 undergrads, 4,000 graduate students. Um, and out of the thousand people who come in, in, in the undergraduate and thousand people come in the graduate level, a subset of those people take are just in system science. So I said teach probably the most or the most popular elective in this field. So the content that you're getting is at a very, very world class level. But what we've done is made it accessible to everyone. So that's the that's the theory piece. And you have to really reread it, restudy it. It took me years and years and years to put together that curriculum. So don't just take it one time, take it multiple times, teach the course. We, um, Emily uh, and her team really help you help others by teaching it. But then we've created an educational leadership program and that has probably about 20, 30 steps. And then more recently, we've created a management leadership program. We're educating people no different than at a Harvard Business School or a Stanford would do on project management, um, how to articulate things, how to build a, a pipeline. I mean, stuff that would take, probably people would never learn, um, people get to learn. And the leadership that we're building are extraordinary people um, 
who are everyday working people. These aren't people who are full-time nonprofit activists. Uh, there's no resource development team here. Um, these are retired working people or working people, all people who worked for a living. So we are truly a movement of the working people for the working people. And there's no other movement like this on the planet. And it is a movement that has both theory and practice, theory and practice, theory and practice. And what we've done now is to educate those people who come through our movement, and those of you who are new, welcome, that you need to have three elements if we're going to really create the world that we want. A, you have to take action. So those of you who made it here and someone said, I was just listening, I'm going to get a bumper sticker, put yard signs up. That's great. That's phenomenal. Everyone should be doing that. Action. Because what that action does, you'll have an experience when you take an action, right? We decide to go to the amusement park. You have an experience. Um, you decide to get a dog. You have an experience with the dog. You decide to raise a kid. You have an experience. You decide to go out and hand out a flyer. You have an experience. You decide um, you're going to go date someone. You have an experience, right? So life is about us as soul making, doing these courageous actions, small and large. And out of that, you have experiences. Those experiences, ultimately, they will affect your consciousness. And that's what we're doing. And that consciousness will then direct you to the next action, which will move you into a different experience and so on and so on and so on. But you need this triumvirate of action, experience, and consciousness. Action, experience, and consciousness. Now, the leaders that people select reflect their state of consciousness. And you can see that leaders over the years, particularly in the United States, or for that matter, in the world, have degenerated. It's pretty degenerate, the quality of leaders people select today. But that degeneracy reflects the consciousness of people. That the elites, the swarm, has intentionally degenerated with actors who are leaders, people who say one thing and do another, and then more importantly, people think it's acceptable to have that. So over time, as this process goes on, people's experiences get very limited, their consciousness gets limited, and less and less what happens is they don't even act anymore. So no action, no experience, a diminished consciousness. That's what's been going on. People think somebody's gonna do something. Our movement is built bottoms up. We had someone um, this morning saying, oh, I wrote to customer service, no one got back to me. I mean, this is a very fucked up attitude. Okay, it's something that this person could have solved themselves. They think we are here to serve them. When the entire movement has been built ground up from volunteers who are very, very good every mornings at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. We have an operations meeting. We look at everyone's uh, issues. People have issues. We've created a, a way that people can submit issues, but they have to tell us what, what they want and they have to be a participant. We're not here to um, be the welfare organization where people are just sitting there and going to take content, take the curriculum, but never really take action. The establishment wants people to be fat, dumb, and lazy. And that's a certain state of consciousness. And that's not going to get you anywhere. So our movement has provided incredible infrastructure with all volunteer staff, bottoms up, through donations of people's time, particularly, and resources. And the infrastructure we've built now is a community, most of all, worldwide, we have let this community grow bottoms up. There's no anointment top down. We watch people's work. Do they take the course? Do they get it? Do they act? And if they do, they get leadership positions. And then they get more training. And they get more training. It's truly a meritocracy-based model. And it's, again, by working people, artists, nurses, um, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, retirees, uh, plumbers, electricians, as, as um uh, IT workers, show me any other movement that's like this. What you'll find is organized crime people in many of these parties, et cetera. They're all paid criminals, okay? They do it for favors. They do it to get a job somewhere. 
That's how these political parties work. So that's why we're on a very powerful path because everyone who's come to our movement, all 106 of you, are doing it all for the right reason. Nicholas is here. Nicholas works as an electrician full time. And he has mobilized people in Kentucky and he has read all the materials. Nicholas is getting the education of a PhD out of MIT, whether he knows it or not. So is, you know, Tracy. So is Jewel. You know, so is Rose. So is Bob Smith. So, A, we've created a world class educational infrastructure, an incredible community of people who are highly self reflective, who are highly dedicated, who are truly compassionate human beings. So it's an extraordinary group of people. You really feel like you have, you know, um, you know, a true family of people. Um, and many people said, oh, you know, during COVID, my family did this. Well, you know, sometimes your family turns out to be your biggest enemies. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. But we, we're creating a global family of people who are dedicated to really, really building truth, freedom, health. And that's what we're doing. And they come from all different backgrounds. But the singular thing is, they're they're um, um, they're real seekers. The challenge as a movement, as an institution, as an organization, is that we have to recognize that we ourselves are still in the fishbowl of the swarm. Right. So if you you're you know you're in the fishbowl with all this polluted water around you. So in order to make it out of that. When you recognize where you are, you have to be um, in somewhat self-observational mode. And this self-observational mode leads to one realizing that it's very, very easy to get manipulated. And the manipulation is to always have this thinking that someone else is going to do the work. Oh, Dr. Shiva, can you do research on 5G and blah, blah, blah? Sure, I can do that. But you know what we've done now? We have open sourced our Cytosol platform, so you can do that. You have a research question, we will enable you to do the research. Oh, Dr. Shiva, this is hurting me. What should I take? Well, as I think uh, Catherine Sway said, we have now open sourced our system health platform, another powerful solution, where if you are any type of ba background from any background, you can truly become a health educator. You know, there's infinite choices now for health and well-being. You can take this supplement, you can take eat this food, that diet. I mean, the choices are infinite. How do you figure out what's right for the right person at the right time? Well, we've created that system. That's a system self-education program. Another very powerful solution. A couple of weeks ago, we shared with people a solution we've had for 10 years, which is about enabling food manufacturers, about if you want to start um, you know, some food company. We have created a systems certification program that's worldwide now. It's called uh, Clean Food and Raw Food Certified, um, accessible to many, many people. So we are directly affecting the food system. And every one of you can be part of defining that certification. It's not USDA organic come top down or non-GMO bunch of people coming top down. It's bottoms up. So think about that solution. These are extraordinary solutions. And it's taken decades to create these solutions. But now that we have a movement, we're not reliant on the swarm to get out these solutions by the people for the people. You, you guys can be the agents of delivering those solutions. So the Truth, Freedom, Health movement is another solution. And that solution is to enable you to raise your consciousness because our leaders reflect our consciousness. And what's really interesting with consciousness raising is. You can have people at a very low state of consciousness, but one, you know, clever monkey <laughs> raises the consciousness of a million of those people. That's what's fascinating. If you remember Planet of the Apes, right? One Caesar, the ape who sort of learns how to talk, he liberates all of them. So our goal is we don't, we're not here to convince anybody. Don't waste your time. However, we are here when, to support those people who are moving through that path of consciousness to accelerate their growth much more rapidly because one person who understands the nucleus of what we're sharing is literally truly a being of light in many ways because they are, their, um, 
uh, getting off the plantation affects many people because the knowledge here is that powerful. This is why when you saw 2020, me alone in this room, we affected a half a billion people. What was What is it I shared? I shared a systems approach to the immune system. We were the ones who called to fire Fauci. We took that same systems approach, expose the election voting systems. It's quite incredible. What one person can do with this knowledge is like, imagine an alien came and had some type of beam weapon that could just blow up every other weapon on the planet. You're pretty powerful. And this knowledge gives you that kind of power. But it gives you that power and it has to be exercised consistently. Some people will come, oh, I learned this, I learned this, but you know, blah, blah, blah is not getting it and they leave, right? Or, for whatever, or they don't put in the effort. Um, and this is also part of the swarm. The swarm has trained people, you know, everything has to come easy. You order stuff on Amazon quickly. You click of a button, you get this. But you know what? Building a movement is not easy. Taking care of your health is not easy. If you have poor health, it has taken years to get to that situation. Now, you can go down the allopathic route and take some drug, and it's going to have serious side effects. Or you have to play the long game. Okay, I got to do the, the right exercise. I have to eat the right foods. I have to have the right company. I have to have the right um, regimen of relaxation and so on. It's not any one thing. And you do that over and over and over again, little by little, enough times you achieve real health. Our movement is playing the long game. We're not here for immature people who think, oh, I made this one phone call. I, I went to, I handed out five flyers, you know, 10 people walked by me, no one picked up, oh, wine, wine, wine. Well, go back and do it again and again and again and again. And that's how we build movements. That's how you achieve anything in life. I remember when I first studied calculus, the concept of a limit was so weird. I couldn't even understand it. And I just studied the words over and did hundreds of problems, hundreds of, and finally it emerged. We've created a whole bunch of people whose consciousness by design has been devastated to think, oh, you do a little bit and you get a lot. And that's what the elites do. The elites are all about very low investment. They're all about high ROI, right? High return on investment. I put $1 in and I made a billion on Bitcoin. Ooh, am I not smart? Wow, I'm so smart. I move capital around and I make a shitload of money. You didn't really create value. Value is created at the point of production. Value is created by work, by labor at the point of production. And this is fundamental to what it means to be a true human being who actually contributes to society, not being a scumbag and just moving capital around all day. That's really not work, guys. But that is what they're training people to do. Our movement is educating people on valuing themselves. Our movement is educating you on exploring yourself and interconnecting your own suffering, your own journey, with the collective suffering and journey of all other people. And recognizing that we have to organize ourselves. This is not some kumbaya of uniting and shoving under all the contradictions. This is an us versus them. There is an us and there is a them. Don't let anyone fool you. Oh, you know, let's all unite. No, we're not gonna unite with the swarm. <laughs> When someone tells you to unite and, oh, this is being divisive, that means they're part of the swarm. We are here to separate, as a great being said, the wheat from the chaff. We are. We have to do that. But our movement has had massive, massive impact. Our movement, I keep saying, is like molasses. It just moves, and it's very viscous. And when people get it, they get it. You can't unlearn this stuff. That's what's powerful about it. So you will see the entire anti-Zionist movement came out of here, right here from this movement. There's been 100 million views on a very directed slogan we put out, Zionist cocksucker. It is not a curse word. It is a very powerful slogan that most working people throughout the world have had on their minds, but we articulated it. 
Another political statement we educated people on, Zionism, Zionism is racism in the service of imperialism. Very pithy, succinct slogan, which reveals that Zionism is a political ideology. It was our movement that said the government launders censorship through social media companies. Again, a very powerful statement, which brings together all of this knowledge into one statement, but very powerful. It is our movement that says end the occupation of America, not ceasefire now. That's a namby-pamby bullshit slogan. It is this movement which made the hashtag fire Fauci. This movement did that. This movement collected many petition signatures. It is this movement that put on the map hashtag election fraud. Trump was calling it voter fraud, which is very different. And I can keep going on and on and on. Our movement has permeated the consciousness of billions across the world without getting the credit due, but that's okay because people know about us. And now we're at a very, very important point because we're gonna raise consciousness in very powerful ways. We have Marianne Berry in Arizona. She goes out there and collects signatures. She hands out a card and someone else sees it and they do a live podcast with us. And that brings in other people. Michael Griffiths and Geetha are out there you know, doing meetings. They're organizing thousands of people in the United Kingdom. Out of that, another podcaster comes and people say, wow, it's pretty cool, even though the podcaster was sort of foolish, but we educated him. And 20 more warriors joined us. You see, it's going viral, but we're doing it on our terms. We're not begging to go on Fucker Carlson's show because we don't owe shit to anyone. And that's what bothers them. We stand up on our own two feet. We're not here to compromise our principles. We're not here to say personal integrity and public integrity can be different. Booby fucking Kennedy says that because the swarm has a luxury of living in two worlds. They have the luxury of killing their wife, banging 38 women, and then telling people to live another life. Trump has a luxury of having many, many lawyers and banging, you know, prostitutes while his wife is pregnant and then pleading as though he's some victim. We don't have that luxury. Working people don't have that legal support. They don't have that PR machine to, you know, whitewash all their crimes. The Kennedys do. The Kennedys whitewash all their crimes. We don't. Nor should we ever, ever compromise on any of this shit. Well, he says some good things. No, it doesn't matter what the fuck he says. What does he do? What does that individual do? What has his life been about? What is their journey about? Have they actually suffered? Have they had to live the lives that the majority of 8 billion of us have to do? No, they don't. Everything they do is to keep us on their plantation. And our leaders, the next big phases, they're learning to speak with authority, to be coaches of other people. That's what our leaders, so when you know, we have hundreds of thousands of people say, oh, Dr. Shiva, I love your videos, we wanna help. Okay, now get off your butt and do the work. Well, I don't know. No, you have to do the work now. Our leaders are learning to be righteous coaches, to demand the highest from people, not to be namby-pamby people pleasers, Dale Carnegie courses, you see? That's what Dale Carnegie was about in the 70s, teaching a whole set of management people how to be people pleasers. It's not what we do here. We have people with a very high degree of consciousness who are moving through a journey to own the right of working people to rule ourselves not a bunch of you know, hypocrites. So if you want to raise your consciousness, if you want leaders, you know, oh, if you want a better governance system, raise your own consciousness, have high standards, study, learn, work hard. These are very, very age old principles. Our movement's gonna demand that of people. So if you come to our movement, and you sign up and you say, oh, Dr. Shiva, I like you. Well, we're going to call you up the next day and say, where the fuck are you? Are you going to hand out some flyers? 
Are you going to help us get on the ballot? Are you going to put a bumper sticker? Are you going to come to an open house? Are you going to invite other people? Get to work because this movement is here. The educational system's here. You have no excuses anymore and be part of the solution. And we will push you. That is called leadership, not like going down to the lowest common denominator. And you end up with an unconscious electorate electing or putting people like Booby fucking Kennedy, Biden, Trump, Tulsi Gabbard. You go down the list, Bernie Sanders, your leader, Saad Guru, come on. These people say they're for health. And the other day they were forcing people to get vaccinated at their own ashrams. Uh uh, we're not gonna put up with contradictions. We're gonna demand the highest. We deserve that. Life is very, very short. And why live as slaves? So this movement's about you. You have to do a little bit of contemplation and you have to intersect your journey to the collective journey. And that is truly enlightenment. It's not sitting under a tree and, you know, seeing the lights and all that. You can have those experiences, but that's not enlightenment. Enlightenment is con connecting you, your soul, your journey with the collective journey and then fighting. Not just meditating, but fighting. And that is what we're teaching people. We've created an extraordinary environment to do that. And we'll keep growing. We'll keep getting better and better and better. But our goal and our mission is so profoundly clear. And um, it's an honor for me always to share this with you guys, because um, for me, it's been a very long journey, you know, of, of 60 years. And for each one of you, just reflect on your journey. So we have a, a powerful framework here. It's an educational system. It's a technology. It's a community. And... Reflect on the fact that as you raise your consciousness uncompromisingly and you act and you act and you have experiences and you raise your consciousness and you keep doing that, every day we've created a system where just like a gym, you go in and maybe do 20 minutes, maybe do four, four workouts a week. This is a place to work out. It's a place to exercise your citizenship muscles and you get as much as you put in. So, but we've created that wonderful environment. And um, as I shared before, a great author once said, um, the most illiterate people are those people who say, well, I don't want to be political. You know, I, I don't like politics. Those are the most illiterate people. You cannot but be political. You have to be political because politics is what de determines, you know, as Bertolt Brecht said, the price of food, inflation, everything around you is determined by politics. And the elites purposely, intentionally, by design, want to frustrate you, want to make you complacent, want you not to participate in politics. You have to participate in politics. It is a nature of life. And whether you don't, if you don't participate, you are participating by your lack of participation because you're owned by somebody. So that's what this is about. So to all of you who are new, um, get involved. A, take the course. Teach it, take it, teach it, take it, teach it. Um, connect with a leader if you haven't. Emily and Crystal and every, you know, they'll connect you. Um, download a flyer, the Shatter the Swarm flyer. Share the Shatter the Swarm website with your friends. You should think about every day handing out a few cards, meeting people. We've made it easy. You can just say, hey, here, here's the thing. Come to this open house. Got 110 people here. Everyone should go do that with 10 people. So we made it easy. We made it as easy as going to a gym. <laughs> okay? We have. And we give you lots of different exercises. You're not doing a bench press. You're not doing a lat pull. You're not doing a squat. But you are handing out a flyer. You're learning how to talk to people. You're learning how to challenge people. You're, learn you're, you're going to learn all this stuff. And so it's just a matter of time. It's an extraordinary movement that we've created. We have extraordinary people. And so get involved, get involved, get involved. Right now, um, on the Senate, on the sorry, on the president's side, we're running for president of the United States. We've exposed those people who've been involved. I mean, all of you know how corrupt the system is now. You, you, you've seen it. We go to collect signatures, they call the cops on us. Extraordinary. 
Now we're teaching people how to file legal notices. We're going to have a bunch of lawyers on our staff soon. Pro se lawyers. Who teaches that? We do. So by the end of 2024, we will have leaders in every country. We already are in every country, but leaders, organizational structures in every country, every state, hopefully every village eventually. So that's what we're building, and we're doing it by ourselves. So everyone pat yourself on the back. There's no, you know, APAC here. There's no Zionist hoodlums funding us. We're doing it ourselves. And don't think they're going to cover us. My followers will stay 520,000 on Facebook probably for another 10 years, okay? And don't whine that they're shadow banning us. That is what they will do. But you know what? You get you watch what's going on social media. Random people are picking up our stuff and they're hitting them. So the offline, the future is offline, the future is you. So get involved. You are the agent of change. No one is coming to help us. No one. Tracy Peters is the agent of change. You know, you know, Nick Rivera is the agent of change. Bob Smith is. Delio Fernandez is. Nicholas Lupo is, you know. Door establishes one flyer you hand out. You're being out there. People are wondering, why is this woman out here in the rain? Let me find out what this is about. Wow, there must be something extraordinary. She stands out here alone on her own two feet. She's not waiting for a crowd, you know, wearing MAGA hats. For, you know, she's doing it on her own. Marianne Berry is organizing people. She's got a list. She's got to call people. She's got to motivate them. Marianne is going to forget about what anyone else does. Marianne's going to grow extraordinary, you know? So this is about you. That's what this is about. And the collective. But it begins with you. Don't diminish you. You have to intersect you with the collective. It's both. So in closing, you know, this is really about raising our consciousness. We raise our consciousness. It sends out a ripple effect into the universe. And I'm not fully sure how that works but it works that way. It does. And we know this at the physical chemistry level, particles communicate to each other. We don't know how, but they do. You raise your consciousness halfway across the universe. Your consciousness raising is moving someone else's information, matter, and energy. It is. So we, we can't explain this, but that's how it works. So don't diminish the what you're doing. It's just going to be time. That's all. It's time and consistency of effort. There's no shortcut. We're, we're playing the long game. All right. Um, Trey, keep uh, streaming. We'll take questions. Trey, if there's any comments online, you can share it with us. Um, but let's um, take any questions here. It's 9.39. We'll take questions until about the next 20 minutes. All questions are open in this context of governance, leadership, education, et cetera. Wow, silence. <laughs> yeah, please raise your hand if you have a question. Okay, we have Justina Wallace. Hi, Justina, how are you? Hi there, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Dr. Shiva. Um, I've been following you and uh, supporting you on social media for quite a while, since at least 2020. Oh, um, really? What's your, are you on Twitter or on Facebook? Um, Instagram and uh, YouTube. I'm. I'm uh, my mystic within. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyway, but yeah, I've... I've uh, do you, do you I've know been... Michelle Santanosa? No, not yet. Yeah, so Michelle and you should connect because Michelle's created a social media team. Oh, and good. you should get on board and you can help her. But go ahead. I have a lot of fun with it because... Um, anyway, I spoke with you last, last year and uh, you had helped me with a lot of things like uh, getting off of cannabis, which I used for getting away from pharma but anyway um so my journey was like all uh health related 
and I uh, I spoke to Glenn this week. And I'm in Alberta now. I was in Toronto before and Ottawa, so I'm in Canada. So my question is like, how I I'm not in America, right? Like how it, it for a while I was actually really scared to participate because of how we got shut down during the trucker convoy. You know, the financial fear is what I see. Like I had it, and 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 I see a lot of Canadians are in that same boat. You know, so anyway, I'm at, at the point where I'd, I'd like to help. I'd like to, I'd like to help uh, and connect with others in in Alberta. But like, I just don't know. I mean, I've taken a course. I I find the website a little bit overwhelming. Um, like, I don't know. How how do you see people from other countries helping? So first of all, it's a great question, Justine. It's a very timely question. So the movement is global. Okay. In different countries, we have set very practical goals. So I don't know how much Glenn shared with you, but we have about 3,500 people across Canada who oh. have okay. you know, signed up to be part of our movement. Thank and God, okay, let that's that good. Just, and we've yeah. let that just sit there because we didn't have an organizational structure to reach out and mobilize them because we wanted it to develop. Mm. So now we have, leaders who are emerging bottoms up, Glenn, Natalie, and probably about seven or eight other people across Canada. Those awesome. people have a very specific goal. And we have to do this methodically right. because mm -hmm. of what occurred with the truckers movement in Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, people can go take action, which is good. Action is very important. But action combined with the right theory is like, is like a, a potent you know, to really do change. So the truckers movement um, had passion, but it didn't have the right political theory. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. So That's and right. still Canada, Canada doesn't, there's all these different groups that really don't know what they're doing. So and, 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 we, and, and there, yeah, go ahead. So Sorry. what we're doing is step one, we put together a very nice manifesto, a flyer for Canada. Okay. Which lays out, look, here's the real salute. Here's the problem um that's going on it's very similar to the united states there is a serious health issue. health is a very powerful place to start mm -hmm. because health intersects it's it's a multi-systems problem but mm -hmm. we've tuned it to canada and then what we're doing now in canada is we're mobilizing people across canada a by inviting them to understand this problem and then saying look you need to get training you know some people will hand out flyers but we're going to create enough people in Canada who go through the systems training because you have to have across Canada enough people have the theory and and the, and the training. OK, so mm -hmm, we've mm -hmm. done that. So, um, Ken, I don't know. I don't know if Glenn Natalie's here, but you should connect with them. I think, Glenn, we're probably going to have another meeting this Sunday. Right. We should with, your, with the team. And so there's a core leadership that has emerged, but we're doing it very methodically, Justine, and you should get involved since. You've been following us since you should connect with Glenn. Yeah, with yeah. I, I, I mean, I mean, for a while it was, you know, having to secure a house. I have two small children. Yeah, um, I, I moved from uh, the auto, the Toronto area to Ottawa. We did the whole um, off grid acreage thing, but um, it was so, so hard to get any permits to build and blah, blah. And uh, it, it was really soul crushing, actually, how much Ontario is under um, already total terror and it's just a very extreme there so i moved back to i was here in alberta 15 years ago i find it um to have different issues like for example um i mean they're they're really they're doing all the same things here in canada but they're pushing different issues like uh alberta has like that pair polyp on my like whatever his name pair polyvier like he's one of them too right his his wife was um she was the ceo of the um company i can't remember the name that was oh. importing the test kits yeah and um so it's the same thing it's that not so obvious establishment that really pisses me off <laughs> but but justina look at look at the words that you've learned what we need to do is we need to, there's not going to be there's there is an urgency but if we don't do the right things in the right way we have to create the right foundation 
in every country, which yes. means you have to have enough people who understand why we must hammer the not so obvious establishment. They are right. the evil, right? So because I'm I'm so tired of having like I, I make the predictions, you know, I gave birth in an empty hospital in 2020. Mm -hmm. I've 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 predicted Trump, like I'm, I'm I feel I'm psychic. Like I I I feel that RFK is gonna get in and it, it's just it, it it makes me so angry. But the, but the but the cool thing is Justina, for the first time in history, a movement like ours exists, which is exposing the not so obvious establishment. And this is what's historic. Typically, an RFK would be able to bamboozle people. Mm -hmm. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yep. But when I hit him in 2020, I lost 20% of my followers. Yeah. And people are like, oh, why don't you work with Booby? You and him could be a powerful you know, team. Yeah. But the fact is that we're creating enough people who have the courage like you have and others to break from these devils. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And the Kennedy family is an organized crime family. Uh, That's absolutely. who they are. End to end to end. And the fact that you get this so deeply, and very. there are others who are on the fence about this, you become a very powerful vehicle to educate them now. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Because there are so many women in the medical freedom movement who've been bamboozled by that fool. Who have lost so a lot mothers. of children. Yep, so mothers. Many mothers who he's stolen money from, leveraging their uh, guilt. You say, yeah, and then and he sinks the movement. He just sinks it. He, that is his job. He takes over other hijacks movements and then moves them elsewhere. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That is yep. his job. That's what. That's why he gets publicity. But the mm -hmm. fact is, you get it, Justina, and you get it. Glenn gets it. Natalie gets it. And this is why it's just a matter of time now. If our movement didn't exist, they would keep getting away. It would just be you in your little hovel trying to expose Kennedy or me trying to expose him. So that's what's so powerful about this movement that so, people are figuring out Saad Guru in India. People, black people are figuring out Martin Luther King. Yep, you know, yep. People are figuring out all these shills that were created to keep people in abeyance and outsourcing their future to these people, right? Absolutely, so we, absolutely. So, yeah. At least, so, at least, we, at least, Western Canada still has some heart left. It's not that learned helplessness as in Eastern Canada. Not as much, anyway. Um, I, I understand. It's gonna, I look, it's, we, we just have to build the movement because we have the right theory, the right framework, and it's not going to happen overnight. But I guarantee you, all of these other parties which are out there we're going to win over time many of those people to us because they're going to see the clarity of thought and direction we have yeah it's yeah and it's no no, no long no longer about like oh i'm right i was right about covid i was right about i don't want to be right i wish i was wrong yeah yeah so 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 anyway um i just, I, I want to take a couple more people's questions if that's okay yeah, but, I just I just so just methodically yeah. finishing the course. Is that where I, I start? I would like go I through the, the course, go through it again, come come to the open houses, connect with Glenn. Because you know, the course is one piece. Okay. He he sent me the uh internal like the, the messaging thing, so I'll do that. Yeah, connect there, but come to Glenn and uh, you know, all the people throughout the world in different communities are holding meetings. Like in Finland, they okay for Eastern Europe they have for Norway has their meeting, Southeast Good. Asia. So Good. I am directly now um, getting myself more on the ground by directly working with leaders. Awesome. It took a awesome. lot over the last four years to build all of this. But now I'm sort of coming full circle and spending time with leaders. Um, you know, I, I did three meetings today, you know, with uh, with a number of people. Right. Awesome. And to me, that's very exciting because you're getting back on the ground. Right. Yes. So I yes. would suggest that you connect get involved, help Glenn make some phone calls. We have a big list that we got to go through, mobilize people, beat up people, tell them, look, you signed up. You, you liked all the videos. What the fuck are you doing? Right. Yes. Say, yes, well, yes I'm yes. busy when you got to slap them upside the head. What do you mean you're busy? Like you have to talk like, because they did see the videos. They did give us their phone numbers. They did all this work. Well now mm -hmm. get off your ass. So well, get out of the, get out of the fear, get out of the fear. Yeah. Get out of the fear and get out of the, habit of thinking someone else is uh, deep down people think someone else is going to come down 
even the right. best people. That's right. And 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 uh, yeah. Well, anyway, Dr. Shiva, thank you for, for yeah. What so you're Justina, doing. do two things: connect with Glenn, please. I expect to see you. You know, this Sunday and at the regular meetings. The other thing is connect Hello. with Michelle Santanosa because I do regular videos and stuff, but it's really good to have people on social media bringing people back to the open house. So get involved with that. Okay, sounds fun. Thanks, thank you very much for your work. Yeah, thank you. Well, thanks for everything you've done. Artemis, let's go. Estrada from Maryland. Maryland, is that? Yes, Maryland and the United States and the Washington, D.C. metro area. Oh, okay, um, great. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, your site is all interest that that Open Science Institute interests me, and um, it's I I've found what I've learned is called scale energy and uh, Ormus minerals for health. So uh, so uh, yeah, um, there's a there is another group who did their who's doing their own grounds up movement for one of the the scalar technologies, but. Uh, you have to be physically healthy enough to walk and do all these things. And I can't do that. So I, I'm wondering, uh, so f I saw, like, I went through the portal. So to know how to do that research, I mean, like, how much, I, I, I guess my question is that, can it be done for things that are not like a supplement or you know, something something that's a bit less traditional? Let's put it that way, because kind of like how how you have your system theory, you explained all the stuff. It's also really different, e extremely different. And I think this is this is one of the things that uh, made it so I could before like I I, uh, I couldn't I literally because of health I couldn't order a bumper sticker. It didn't and uh, just uh, which is better than it was before, which I couldn't get food by myself, so my friends were helping me. So, and these things I think would be very good for other citizens to have. So, uh, I wanted to like, I, I wanted to know if you know, something like that would you know pr provide a framework so that you know I could in I could introduce it at say, for example, like work when I tried to do it. Uh, something like one of them recently. So, so Artemis, can you can you just succinctly ask what your question is? Okay, yeah, my uh, I guess uh, kind of like how you've done a a framework of you know how you have the cards and other things for different topics that you've come up with. with like for you, it was like say it was COVID or climate change. Right. So, what's your question? So, yeah. okay, okay, so uh, I want to do that th same thing for Scalar and Ormus. I'm wondering if Cytosol that research would be the, the okay um, so yeah so okay so okay so um you know for years i've had people in the in this world of sort of the alternative world talk about scalar and ormus and i say you need to design an experiment okay yes okay so um cytosol is a um a systems biology framework that allows people to do research, but all research begins with a hypothesis. You have to have a, um, a uh, you know, what you think are gonna be the potential outcomes. And then everything in the universe ultimately is information, matter, and energy. The problem with some of the alternative medicine people is that they don't know how to translate anecdotally or experientially what they had had into a scientific framework so they get you know put into this world of woo-woo medicine okay and those same people it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of hard work to do this work um if you look at the works of richard Feynman, who's a, one of my heroes richard Feynman. i mean yeah when they looked at quantum electromechanics, you know, he did a hypothesis, they mapped out an experiment, and they were able to measure things up until 0.0000000000001, okay, which people didn't think you could do. So, um, so the first step, I don't want to do it here. Um, if you have a research idea, you can set up yeah. a, a call, but you have to come in with it grounded. Okay, 
um, something that you can measure, that you can execute, get results on, because everything is ultimately information, matter, and energy. Electromagnetic waves you cannot see with our physical eyes, but they are interconvertible. Energy gets converted to material changes in the body. And you can measure these things. But if yeah. you can't frame it that way, then it just becomes woo-woo when you go around in circles. And it's frankly very time consuming and it doesn't get you anywhere. And it frankly um, distracts people. So what I would suggest is um, you can um, uh, set up time. Um, Emily or uh, Crystal or somebody will send you my assistant's email and you can set up time. But please, um, you know, We'll put a couple of PhDs on, but you got to be ready. You can't just make it just something random, okay? You're going to have to right. get a little bit tighter in the way you ask these questions. But thank you. Good to have you. Okay, Ray Martinez. Go ahead, Ray. Hello, Dr. Shiva, and welcome. Yeah. Oh, you're awesome people. Um, the question I have here is, I mean, I've come to know how important connections are and small things matter. Can you speak a little louder, Ray? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me yeah. now? Yeah. Okay, I got to just get closer here. Um, anyway, the question I had was when we are engaging the people, I've come to know how important small things matter and the connections are. And when I'm handing out cards and flyers, I find myself giving them my phone number because I highly recommend and challenge them to watch Shatter the Swarm video to help raise their consciousness. But I put my number on there for them to be able to call me back and dialogue. And people are calling back and dialogue wow. because at first I was just handing out cards, but I wasn't making the connection. I, I yeah the connection. So I want to maintain it and continue to develop it. And so I put my number on there and I encourage them to make contact with me and ask, you know, so that I can answer any questions that come up. So that's great, right? Yeah. I mean, right, look, um Michelle will tell you that I've spent like three hours with people on the phone, just explaining a simple concept like booby fucking Kennedy mm -hmm. or Trump or, and it's over and over and over again, right? And so if you can hand out a flyer and you can have a direct connection with people and you can educate them, that's really cool, right? And that's what we want people to be able to do, but that's excellent. It's a great, great thing. Thanks, Ray, thanks for sharing that. Let's go over to Anuradha Griffiths, and then we'll go to Canada Finney. Canada Finney. Anuradha, how are you? Um, I'm What's fine, thank you. My question is, um, is there a bottoms-up movement in the United Kingdom anywhere, and how can I get connected with those people? My second question is, why should the elite, uh, why should the swarms get the privilege of having the title elite? Because we all are equal to elites in some way. We are we maybe not having as much as money as they have, but we are good in knowledge, good in doing other things, connecting with people, helping people, giving them the knowledge. So basically the swarms are blood suckers and I call them predators. I I, I call myself as idiot because I feel proud because I have got the knowledge with the NHS and helping the um, people who are needy, whatever I can give, I give. So I am no different to the elites, but I don't do anything what the swarms does. So is it right yes, for me? First of all, yes. Yeah, so first of all, Michael Griffith. Michael is Michael Geetha are quite extraordinary leaders in the United Kingdom. So Michael's here. Michael runs regular meetups, um, and you can connect with Michael and Geetha. That's one. Second, to answer your question, in the words have meanings that obviously are dynamic. They change over time. Pol from a political context, the word elite now um, refers to these scumbags, okay? But you're absolutely right, right? Um, the elite model comes out of the fact that they've created this infrastructure where 0.0001% think they can rule over. So in this, in this word, when we use the word elites, it's not to mean that we're not equal but it refers to them in a derogatory manner okay when we use that term but thank you good observation but connect with michael michael's gonna text you right now on so you can connect with him 
Great. <laughs> yeah, we're connected, Dr. Shiva. We've, uh, we've, we've met a few times, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, we're, we're connected up. Great. Um, let's go to uh, Canada, Finney. Canada, how are you? Hi, Dr. Shiva. Um, it's actually Canada. Oh, <laughs> Canada. Where, where are you from, Canada? So I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee, but right now I'm living in Jacksonville. Oh, okay. I, I, I heard you speaking with Emily when I first came in. Yes, sir. Um, so my specific question, I'm sorry, I have it in a note. Let me pull it up. <laughs> um, what are your plans on how to gain the Black vote? And what policies are you planning on having or not having for Black people, specifically American descendants of slaves? Yeah, so let's, uh, so one of the things that's happened, you know, when I first came to MIT in 74, I'm sorry, 80, 81, um, I don't know if you know this, Canada, you know, there's, I just got this very interesting old book, but the first, there's quite a bit of evidence now that concomitant with the slave trade that took place from Africa, the first indentured slaves were out of South India. I don't know if you knew this, okay? Indians were the first ones that were taken all over the world as indentured slaves and servants. That's why you have a lot of people in Trinidad and Tobago who are, you know, people from India, okay? Um, in fact, there's a wonderful book that points out that the that it's likely even before the first slave came here, the first indentured servants were brought here from India. And it's a very interesting book that I'm reading, and I'll share more about it. But, um, you know, my great-grandfather was an indentured slave and a servant, okay? So when I came to MIT in 1981, the Indians, quote-unquote, the Indians here, would consider me, a quote-unquote, a black, because they were all the Brahmins. So my friends were all the poor blacks from the inner cities and the poor Hispanics and poor whites. That's who I identified with because the Indians who were the upper caste Brahmins are actually quite racist. So um, what's happened to people of minority backgrounds, not only among, uh, when I mean minorities, I'm talking about not only among black people, but most oppressed minorities from colonial, from the colonialism era, right? Which by the way, also include poor whites, okay? Is that yes, the, sir? I, the, I am aware of um, yeah, you know, the fact so, that we're all on the same playing field. I just specifically feel like you know, black people trend on a lot of topics. Um, black people, what? I, I trend yeah. on a lot of topics. Yes, yeah, so let, let me. I've let always me, been a black. I'm sorry. You can go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So 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 um, what's happened since 1960 in the United States is there has been a policy by those in power to make sure that um real leaders do not emerge from the black from from black for black people and there's been an active effort to push uncle toms and misleaders among them jesse jackson al sharpton you can go down the list particularly a lot of the evangelical priests have been used to oppress large-scale sections of the black population and Martin Luther King was one of that. And we can have a longer discussion if you want. Malcolm X was actively suppressed. So um, this has also occurred with other minority groups. But one of the first things that needs to happen is that, and, and we've done this, and I've, I've been doing this for about 40 years, is that there is the revolutionary Black movement, which is about truly liberating Black people by providing infrastructure in the inner cities which is what Malcolm wanted to do, and a number of black leaders. But those people were subsumed and sabotaged by the Kennedys who pushed Martin Luther King. And this is very, this knowledge needs to be broadly shared with the vast majority of black people. It's very, very important. So our movement wants to educate among all minority groups, particularly among black people in this country, real revolutionary leaders. So, because what's happened is, that um, there's been an active effort to create a multiracial aristocracy, right? So during the civil rights movement, there was a move to actually have real infrastructure in inner cities. That movement was taken over by the quote unquote affirmative action movement, 
Not that it was a bad thing to demand people have equal rights, right? Because of the way that the uh, situation was set up, right? You you started people at a different starting point. So it wasn't that those things were a bad thing, but they didn't address the fundamental real issue. And it created, uh, by design, a fight between poor whites and poor blacks, right, for resources. So the demands of infrastructure in the inner cities must be addressed, and they still haven't been addressed fully, right? You know, I worked in Newark, New Jersey most of my life. Most white people are afraid to go into Newark still, okay? But my friends were everyday black people, you know, custodial workers, et cetera. But Newark hasn't changed that much. You know, it's had black um, black Uncle Tom's running it. So the infrastructure in the inner cities has not been addressed. And that's one of the first things that needs to be addressed. But before, in parallel to that, Canada, we need to educate enough revolutionary black leaders to understand system science, to understand how black people have been sold out repeatedly mm-hmm. by these misleaders, mm-hmm. you know? So this, so we have to, in some ways, say time out. If we're going to liberate black people, they need to have their own leaders bottoms up, you know, and they haven't had them, right? Every time real black leaders came, um, they were diminished by the Uncle Toms, you know, who totally took advantage or Aunt Jemima's, okay, both. So, you know, you have an incredible opportunity to take this material and really become a revolutionary black leader, black woman leader. So that's what, you know, I really think you should, you know, consider because, you know, if you look at Malcolm X's journey, um, he went, he was bottoms up, right? He came from a family where I think his mother and his father were uh, somewhat activists, right? But he went through his journey, um, you know, getting involved in cultural black nationalism. That's what the black Muslim movement was. It was cultural black nationalism in the vein of Marcus Garvey. Um, But as Malcolm went to Mecca and he came back, he was actually starting to read more and more real uh, books on political theory. And even um, Huey Newton from the Black Panthers before they were executed, right? So there were elements of the black leadership which was starting to connect worker struggle. You know, Malcolm's last, last speech was, I believe there will ultimately be a clash between the oppressed and those who do the oppressing, but it will not be based on the color of the skin. And that's when Malcolm would have become such a powerful leader um, that he, you mm-hmm. know, the establishment executed him because he was going to unite poor blacks and poor whites, mm-hmm. right? While still supporting a progressive nationalism, not a regressive cultural nationalism, which is what um, Elijah Muhammad was doing. And also he, you know, he, he was a scumbag, okay, on top of it, right? He wasn't doing what he preached. So, we leave off in many ways where Malcolm ended, okay? By layering in deep systems theory and political theory. And that's been my journey. You know, if you go to India, we're considered the darkies of India, the low caste Indians. And 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 the low caste Indians of India have a lot of commonality with black people here. And that, that unification also needs to occur, you say? Um, and that education. So there's a lot of education that needs to happen. So I, I really yes, hope, I agree. yeah, I hope, you know, you and Emily connect. Um, but this issue of race has not been fully discussed in America. The real racism, there is a real racism. So the right wing says there is no racism and the left wing has taken over the race discourse and they've diminished it to don't use the N word, don't do this, very minor symbolic things, but they've not addressed the real issue of racism, which is really, a pillar of of advanced imperialism. That's why we say Zionism is racism. It's total racism, right? Which supports you put you play you pay black people less wages than their white counterparts. Now you have the poor white person thinking they're better than the black person, you know? And that's how they create these differences. But we need to educate enough black people on theory and at the same time focus on these infrastructure issues, on eco- economic issues. So Please get involved. And a really, really good question. Um, I will be involved. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I mean, the the people who've owned the discourse on race are a bunch of white, liberal, multiracial aristocrats in places like Harvard. And they write these ridiculous things, you know, diverting the race issue or, 
or dividing the race issue from the issue of capitalist imperialism. They're both intimately connected. One cannot exist without the other. All right, Kaneda, good to have you. I'm very glad you, you came today. What do you do, Kaneda, in Tennessee? Um, so uh, I, I'm not I'm not in Tennessee. I'm in Florida, um, uh -huh. but I am a landscaper um, and I have a oh, side. Really? Uh, oh. Yes, I have a side hustle. Uh, yeah, me and my husband, we, I'm out in the sun all day. <laughs> but um, and I have a little side well, hustle. I got to get print, your number because business. I just cut a bunch of trees down and I got to figure out what's the right ground cover to put. So all the land <laughs> go away. And I've just been <laughs> researching all these plants. So maybe you can give me some advice. So it, yes, sir. And I also have a side hustle like print company. So uh -huh. um, I've already printed off all your flyers. <laughs> oh, great! Um, I'll print them uh, all. You know, ha hand them out. Yeah. Burn those. Yeah, I'm waiting on my bumper sticker, and I'm waiting on my okay. meeting, and I'm waiting on my um, my login information. You know, to get into the True Freedom Health system and all that. Yeah, and so you I'm should get involved that. in the leadership program. You should connect with Crystal and Emily. Because we have the basic program, then we have an advanced leadership program. Okay? okay. We need yes, an army of very revolutionary black women and men in this country. We got it because they were all slaughtered at the end of the you know, 1960s, deliberately. Right. And the Kennedys right. installed people like Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, and all these absolute sellouts who have basically taken advantage of black people for the last 60 years. Leading them nowhere, Agreed. you know, Agreed. keeping them on the plantation. So I, I agree. Um, I'm just ready for my people to wake up. It's hard yeah, to talk well, to them. The way it's going to happen, Canada, is we have to like you. Once you get the theory, the political theory, and I'll work with you, okay? Um, but but it, this is an extraordinary important point that we need to focus on because all the 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 democratic wing uh, uh, the, the, has you know, thinks they own black people. And then then they move over to the Republican side, which is equally worse, right? And they just use the black vote repeatedly. So, and there's no, I don't, I can't point to one revolutionary black leader right now, you know, at all. I can't either. Yeah. I've even been commenting under certain people that I do look up to and I'm like, hey, have you heard of Dr. Kiva? And then they, they just ignore it. So, you know, I'm starting to look at yeah. a lot of people different and you know, maybe this is the time. Like, there, I have there, to be the change that I want to see. So, there's been massive devastation has been done to revolutionary movements across the world because a swarm has deliberately put forward the not so obvious establishment in Uncle Tom's, and mm -hmm. and we have to acknowledge there has been serious devastation done, and th and that's what we're rebuilding. Thanks, Kaneda. Good to have you. Thank you. Yep. Um. Emily, can you give Canada my email address, please? Yeah, I will. And I sent you my contact in the chat as well. Yeah. Perk Singh, how are you? I've seen you do some tweets. Nice to have you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Shiva. Uh, I know you're- yeah, I saw a couple of tweets you did. I retweeted. Where are you out of? I'm a street art photographer in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Uh, okay. I'm in Narcissistic Central, though, Beverly Hills. So uh -huh. you can imagine the Zionist uh, hatred I get just for having long hair and tan skin. Uh -huh. uh, I know you're in a rush, so I'll ask a, a few succinct questions. Why haven't you done a Twitter space in a month and a half? Do you see the value in doing it on a weekly basis? And does my offer of collaboration intrigue you at all? I forget, what, what did you offer? I forget the collaboration offer. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I think it's better to host on MySpace than on your account, because if there's an incident, then your account won't get nuked. And if mine does, then only a few dozen people will be really sad. Well, what's happened is they don't nuke my account anymore. OK, what they because we've I don't know if you know, we fought. I just served uh, Elon Musk today. OK, so they're afraid to touch me because they know that we'll nuke them because of the last loss that we had a big part in federal court. But what we can do, Herc, uh, we did this. We could set up some regular time and date. This is what I think is valuable for what you're saying to do Twitter spaces. And what we do is when we do the, we did the last Twitter space we did was a fun one at 1 a.m. In the morning, we had like four of us and it just, we had like 3000 people show up. It was quite a fun. 
So why don't, if you're interested in that, um, why don't we choose a particular day, you know, in the week um, and do them, you know, um, and organize that. So if you want to, uh, you know, facilitate that, because typically we'll have, we'll have like four or five of us uh, be, I think what they, I think you allowed like two co-hosts, right? On Twitter space and then two speakers, we can do that. So let's start doing that. Um, it's just, we have so many things going on right now. We're getting people on the ballot. You know, literally, if you look at my calendar, it's like five in the morning until 10. And now it's not easing down, but we're able to do a lot more things because we have a lot more people and infrastructure set up, but we can do that. Have you gone through the program, uh, Hirsch? You should, you should connect with, uh, we have a number of people. I don't know if Maria's here, Jill Jones is here. We have a whole organizational structure in California, but you should connect with Maria and Jill Jones. Oops, are you muted, Herc? Sorry, so, I, I yeah. couldn't unmute. I, 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 I muted when you were talking and I went- Yeah, so, so Emily will send you my email. So let's try to figure out a, you know, some scheduled day that we can do Twitter spaces. I was doing them on Friday nights, so your time would have been uh, around ten thirty. Uh, my time would have been around seven thirty. Uh, okay. Well, let's let's send me some emails and we'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. But good to have you. Thanks so much. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Emily and Crystal, if you could share to her, Jill Jones, and their email, that'd be good. All right, let's go over to um, Tara McCluskey, then Noel. Go ahead, Tara. Tara McCluskey. I can wait for her. We'll go over to Zindua Tembuzi. Zindua Tembuzi? If you can unmute yes, your... I'm here. Hi, Zindua. Where are you out of? Uh, Newark, New Jersey. Oh, really, man? What part of Newark? <laughs> uh, South Ward, about across the street from Sharp James. I grew up in the South Ward. So okay, I know where all the is. things, all the things you guys was talking about with the young lady, I've just, you know, people who are very nationalistic are compelled to go underground because we've seen this still extermination from Betty Hampton all the way up to, like you right. said, from so so you can't be over the top unless you I always say an organ must have a rib cage in order to fully operate. And if there's yeah. no design skull for the brain that you can't be out there overtly. And yeah. so, so I've had a list of things about a movement, a global movement focusing on African-African consciousness for some 20 years, but there's no one who ha I've found in America who is not secular, either in religion or either in money or either in this. And what you're doing is one of the first ones that I've seen. I lived in Africa for years. I've been to 10 countries, speak three languages, but how to execute. I got a math and science background from you know, my undergrad. So, so when you, when I started seeing your systems, I was like loving it because, you know, I've done enough of Taylor series and Lagrange and the whole bit oh, okay. to cool. understand the dynamics, yeah. but I never saw an application of it that could be used. So when I saw that and I saw a jersey and I saw a movement and I saw a global, I was like, this has got to be it. I've been looking for this for 25 years. Oh, man, it's great. Yeah, so we got to talk. Let's, yes. um, Zinwa, can, Emily, can you send Zinwa my email? So we should have a conversation perhaps Sunday okay. um, this weekend, okay? Yes. Perhaps me and you and uh, Canada should all speak, okay? But let, let you and I yes. speak because... It's really great because, um, you know, Newark is where I grew up when I was young, right? Right. My best where did friend. Where you grow up at in Newark? Where were you at? Well, I went, if you know where uh, South Orange Road is, across from Martland Hospital? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. South Orange yeah. Avenue, across yeah, from those were, Yeah, those were my stomping grounds. Right. And I actually worked at UMDNJ, okay? Okay, good. Yeah. I know yeah. that I was born, I was born in City Hospital, Martland. And I went yeah, to our oh, okay. side, so I know the you know the landscape. Lived yeah, in Michigan, then, Detroit for thirty years, so I just came. And back. you know the Ironbound section, right? So I know all the east, yeah, all east side, all that stuff. I know. Yeah, yeah this is my. So, home. so we should talk about. because your journey 
you know, and the journey of this movement, it cannot come at a better time because we need to have real leaders among the black community, not these sellouts. And right. I've been waiting, um, you know, to connect, you know, but we just had to wait, right? Because you can't push this on people, right? Exactly. People emerge. So For 25 years I've been waiting. I've been in the nation of Islam, you name it. I have been yeah. all up and seen them all. And I know the limitations because it does not solve three things. My my um, slogan was get free, get in control, and get in power. Yours was truth, health, and... and, and True freedom, freedom and health. I was like, right. So I was like, oh, my God, it's the same three standard pieces right. that keep right. showing up. And right. I have a group called Healing Our Vulnerabilities, which is designed to restore our power and confidence. Because until huh. you do the restoration, you can't be healthy enough to do an application and everybody's been trying to do things without curing disease, emotional, psychological, cultural, and spiritual disease. And yeah, you got to do all three. You yes. have to. So let's, let's talk. Um, how do I pronounce your first name? Zindua. Zindua. Okay. Yes. Zindua. Okay. So Zindua, um, Emily's going to send you my email address. Please email yes. me and, and we'll I set up will. time to talk. I look forward to speaking with you more. Great, great. Look forward to very, it. I'm very grateful that you came today. I'm very excited. And I was stunned. I was going to stay quiet, but when she said what she said about the black leaders and what you're going to do, I was like, okay, I feel compelled to have to say something now because yeah. I didn't want them to think that void was really as big as it is. It's just being subcutaneous is essential because extermination is in vogue at every level. And yeah. So we have to be always mindful of that. Yeah. How to replicate, like the Thomas Crown affair how to quickly replicate you and what you do so you are not ha don't have a bullseye on your back. Exactly, man. You nailed it. Anyway, we're on the same page. Okay. Um, yeah, so so we should talk. Let's have a conversation. I look forward to it. Chris is okay. also very excited, Chris Bradley. Okay. okay. Thanks, Indua. Thank you. I'm gl glad you glad you came here. I'm glad the universe brought us. Thanks. Okay. Let's go over to Noel A. Noel A. Noel A. Noel? Yes. Hi. Yes. Can you hi, uh, hear me? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Doing good. Thank hey, you Noel, very much. How are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing yeah, good. I was trying to reach you a couple of weeks ago to check in, but go ahead. How are you? Oh, I'm I'm great. I'm great. Uh, I actually had trouble logging in. This is actually my first uh, Truth Freedom Health Warriors uh, meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I I well for everybody else you know this, but I attended Dr. Shiva's uh, uh, health systems uh, seminar workshop. And uh, that was, uh, I was, my my brain was, my head was blown away like every single day. But anyway, just to uh, reiterate my introduction, uh, because I had tech issues earlier, um, I'm Noel, I'm out, I'm out from California and I connected right here on the chat already. So I'm looking to connect with somebody here uh, in Los Angeles. I'm actually based in Compton, but uh, we'll just say LA. Um, so yeah, no, I just look, wanna- Look at the chat. You're gonna get a message probably from Emily or Crystal, one of them. Connecting it with the Jill Jones and uh, and Maria. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. 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 No, really quickly, I just wanted to mention that um, uh, what kind of brought me to your to your movement was, and this is just for everybody and yourself, but um, I've uh, all my life I've been kind of like searching for you know the 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 person. Everybody had flaws, right? Everybody's like um, you know had a flaw, either too religious, too capitalist, too uh m monopoly minded so uh, when i found the uh, the education the experience and the warrior mentality i that i saw in dr shiva especially uh, being in his presence is definitely mind-blowing and it's definitely uh inspiring so thank you dr shiva i just wanted to make that point and uh i look forward to working uh in the future yeah and just to like so two weeks i think a month ago you know, we are launching, you know, we bash the not so obvious established, very important to do that. You have to consistently do that. But starting this year, all the solutions we've had in our arsenal for the last 20 years, we're rolling them out to the movement. So, um, you know, for years, for a decade, we had the system self education program. I had to sort of put, put that in stasis as I got involved in electoral politics, but we re relaunched. Noel will be one of our first systems health educators. Um, and we've created a program where anyone, um, by, by the way, there's a whole area called health coaching. 
um, health coaching. What's happened is a lot of people are moving away from you know the traditional medical establishment or the conventional medical establishment, looking at alternative therapies, right? Like yoga or meditation or you know, all, all different kinds. I and mean, there's infinite number of modalities. The establishment knows this. So again, the not so obvious establishment exists in every field. So over the last seven to eight years, um, the not so obvious establishment wing of the medical establishment, people like Deepak Chopra, people like Mark Hyman, Andrew Well, they have started creating health, quote unquote health coaching programs, which is by the way, gonna become about a $30 billion industry in the next few years. But their health pro coaching programs go like this. They teach people, oh, this is energy medicine. Here's how you play a gong. Oh, this is a little bit of, you know, you eat these herbs or this. And it just goes on. It's just say, like, if you go to, I, I looked at one of them. There was, it was horrible. It's like they, they dump so much shit on you that, oh, you learned this. And they give you a little certificate, but you have no framework to understand how to figure out which is the right program for the right person at the right time. And that's what I've figured out with the work we've done, system science. So that educational program, um, anyone can learn, but it's going to really create real quote unquote health coaches, real educators to help, you know, um, people like Noel are going to become more like a skipper, a helmsman. And it's an educational system and a technology platform that will help people who go through this become a real leader to help navigate other people to figure out what's right for them in the right situation. So that's what we've created. So um, I I started doing those workshops again. It was three days straight through, probably like you know 12 hours each day. But it was a lot of fun. We had a very small group of people. Then we also had I think, dinner at my home. So people got to sort of connect with me. And um, But it was really good to have you, Noel. And we're, you know, we're, we will have regular mentoring uh, things once a month, but we want to create an army of systems health educators all over the world who will help other people. But we're going to create it in a way that people can actually create a sustainable vocation out of this, like it would be a civil engineer or an aeronautical engineer. That's what this program is. Thanks, Noel. Good to see you. But please connect with Maria. Great to, great to see you, Noel. Let's go over to Dan from California. Dan, good to have you. And Jessun from California. And then we'll go to Tony Musin from Michigan. And, and then we'll end with Tara McCluskey. Go ahead, um, Dan. Okay, good to be here. Uh, How are you? Part of this. And uh, I listened uh, about two days ago to your discussion with your lawsuit against Garland. Yeah. And I have I've done quite a bit of legal work for many, many years, like about 30 years now. I'm not an attorney. Oh, I say. OK. And I'm not an Internet junkie. <laughs> There's a lot of those out there. But um, I think you were talking about one of the problems we were having was in the complaint was the lies. And the way you deal with that is is sanctions. Now, I posted something into the chat tonight for you. Uh huh. Let me see that. Yeah, if you read my opposition, um, I demanded that the judge sanction the attorneys. Okay, I haven't seen your documents yet, other than what, what yeah. you're talking about. So, if you could share those out. Uh, yeah. So, hey, Chris, we built that website, right? Get off the plantation, Chris. I know Chris was traveling. Chris, are you here, Bradley? Yes, we, yes, we have the website ready. It just needs to be okay. Point. So what we will do, Dan, we will um, maybe Chris and I will huddle up and we'll Chris. Maybe you and I should do a little video and we'll put that out there with the website. Okay, we can do that this coming week. Or Chris, if you maybe you and I do it and we'll send it out to. Hey Dan, can you send me an email, and then I'll send you the link. Okay. Yeah, I just don't to have. Give you, just to give you the understanding, the opposition that I wrote to their motion to dismiss, I've had very very senior lawyers look at it who actually hate pro se litigants, and they were like, they've never seen anything like this. It's it's quite strong. I'll send it to you. But yeah, well, we, there's 
There's some other things that I'd comment on, but I think probably it would be better if we can do it on. Yeah, a let's, let's do that. Let's do a follow up. Or whoever's working with you on the legal. If you can send me the email. No, I, I do. I do everything on my own. So, but we can talk. Okay. Uh, you know, I think if you want to help, if you want to help, you know, <laughs> you know, I just had to, we just served Elon Musk, Zuckerberg. We're, we're, we're continuing our RICO case against all these guys from the 2020 lawsuit, but we can talk more. Okay. okay. Well, one of the things when you look after Garland, he's not the top of the pile. You need to name uh, Joseph R. Biden because he's the top. He's the one appointed Garland. And yeah, so we can let's do a follow up. Let's do a follow up. Okay. All right. Okay. Good enough. Great. Good to have you. Thanks, Dan. And get involved, Dan. And um, there's many opportunities for people with various skill sets to help. But you know, I've been doing all the lawsuits myself. But if you want to help, you know, I'll take it. Well, I'll I'll give you what help I can and give you some you yep. know, some of the experience I've had on it. Yep. Thank you. Let's go to Jasun from California and then Tony Musin from Michigan. Jasun, go ahead. Hi, hi, Doctor. Um, uh, this is Jasun. Um, couple things, but I feel like I really like to uh donate your books to my local libraries, and uh, I know that I'm from South Korea. And I see South Korea, Korea is such a big mess. Uh -huh. the election. It is so messy. And I have two scholars that I really like to have them contact you because one scholar, Thor, you know, Kim Jong, Kim Jong he studied in Harvard. So he speaks English, no problem. We try to get him sort of a hold of you. So Oops, we lost Justin. So where did Justin go? Crystal, did we lose Jessen? All right, we'll wait for her to come back. Let's go to Tony Musin. So I think um, Emily and Crystal, she wanted some books to donate. We can work with Ken to set that up. Ken Fielding. Tony, go okay. ahead. Tony Musin, if we can connect back up with Jessen, she probably had some internet failure. Tony Musin. I'm big. Yes, good evening, sir. Um, um, sir go ahead, one second, Tony. Go ahead, Justin. So, Justin, what do you need yeah. right now? Justin? Yeah, I'm here. Do you, need, here. do you need me to connect with your friend at heart? The, your friend? Is that what you want me to do? You, I will get their uh, email, anything first. I'm trying to get it. Uh, anyhow, um, what were your thoughts? Are you uh, willing to form the political party? Political oh. party? Yeah, so it's a very interesting question. So the goal is, should Truth, Freedom, and Health be a political party? So okay. we, so Justin, we may do that, okay? Yeah. But we want to do that when we have the right, if we want to do that, we'll assess that if we have the right infrastructure in place. The infrastructure means Let's say in the United States, in every state, there are leaders, they have a strong community around them, okay? We'll be able to explore that at the end of this year, okay? Um, yep. But you don't want to put the cart before the horse, right? You want to have a solid foundation. For that matter, right. that entity may be a global party, you see what I'm saying? In all different parts of the world. Yeah. Um, but we don't want to, you know, we, you know, it's like you're building something, you have to lay the right foundation, then you put the plumbing and the electricity in, and then you talk about these other things from an engineering standpoint. Um, so that's where we're at. But it's a good question. Thank you for asking. Yes. Yeah, it's a great question, though. Yeah. What is your, what is your best uh, email address for those em 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 from Korea? Em Emily is going to give it to you. She's going to text it to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. Good to see you again. Let's go over to Tony Mewson. Sorry, Tony, go ahead. And then we'll finish. That's up. okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my first question is, is it possible that we can help you develop a social media platform where, like, you know, Zionists aren't controlling it and maybe you are? And my second question is, um, yeah. we all know. 
we all know the influencing uh, the influence of lobby, uh, lobbyist groups like APEC have on our elected officials. And we know our elected officials serve their own uh, self-interest. With that said, can we beat them in their own game by forming our own lobbying group? Yeah, so the first one, there is a technology platform that I'm in the middle of developing that's completely decentralized. Um, we do need a couple of IT people to help, okay? So if there are IT people here that want to give a little bit of time, it would be, you know, that's what we need. It's more re time of people. And then if there are people who know how to do some product design, hardware product design, that's what I can tell you there, Tony. The second thing is on... Yeah, I mean, we're creating a movement, right? A movement needs to fund itself. Um, sometimes there are people with a shitload of money who don't know what to do with their lives. They should give it to our movement. <laughs> and, you know, we haven't gone out and done that resource development. Um, if, if you want to help with that, Tony, um, we should talk. Typically, um, organizations also create what's called a resource development team, which means people who go bang on people's door and say, give me your money, you know? Um, we can do that. Um, we haven't put the effort into doing that because we've been laying the foundation of making sure we have proper infrastructure, et cetera. But if you want to help with that, Tony, let's do that. I don't know if Tony heard that. Sorry, Tony, I, I don't know if you got muted. Yes, I heard that. Uh, definitely. Yeah. I would love to help uh, in that aspect. Yeah. It's basically there are people who are very good at fundraising, you know, and they do that as a job. They know how to um, get money from people. And there are people who have money, um, but they don't have time. So they look at, and we've had people come to us like this, but it has to be done in an organized way. Now, the swarm, that's all they do, right? All they do is raise money all day long, you know, and they circulate it among themselves. One Zionist gives it to another Zionist who gives it to a Kennedy who then gives it to a Trump. Who then gives it to an they just move capital among themselves but there's some interesting ideas that we have tony so if you want to help let's do that also you should connect with saber in michigan um chris bradley and rebecca mahoplis are the midwest leaders but um chris will connect you up with saber in michigan okay great thank you. thank you sir yep let's go to tara mccluskey and Tony, um, Emily will send you my email if you want to follow up on the resource development site. Go ahead, um, Tara McCluskey. Tara, can you unmute? Maybe someone can text Tara. Tara, if you can't unmute, there a little pop-up will come and you have to hit the unmute on that. Okay, well... That's unfortunate. I was looking forward to speaking with her. Anyway, um, today was a great day. There's a lot of people who have a lot of skills. And I, I enjoyed the conversation today because people really want to jump in and start helping and, and building stuff locally. So I, you guys have, as, um, Emily may have given you my email. So please send it to me. And then you'll see my assistant, Manju, will help set up those follow-up meetings. So please do that, that follow-up. Uh, I want to thank uh, Chris Bradley and Emily. I think you guys were hosting. We're doing a great job in hosting this. And then follow all of you for your time and coming out today. But in closing, here's the call to action. Number one, if you made it here, you've got to go through the, the training. Get involved um, and take the training. Number two, um, in addition to that, go get a bumper sticker. Um, get download the flyer you know print it out hand it out to people um and then uh, invite other people to the open house share the shatter the swarm.com video and if you have skill sets um connect with local leaders with emily and crystal i'm sure intimated you on and get involved all right everyone thank you very much thanks for the opportunity um, to share what we're doing. And thanks for your time and sharing what you guys are doing. It was very inspiring hearing all of your stories. Thank you. Be well, be the light. Thank you.